Mm. Hello, hello. Um, okay, hopefully this is gonna work. Fingers crossed. Um, I haven't done a YouTube live in a very, very long time. Um, I've been doing a lot of Instagram lives recently and Emma and I do, a I was gonna say a monthly, a weekly Monday night chat um, at half past seven. And I've been really liking that. And I thought I might try a regular YouTube live. So here we are. This is the first one. So we're gonna give it a go, see if you guys enjoy it. And um, if you do, maybe we'll do this more often. I don't know if it'll be weekly or monthly or what. But, um, but yeah, I'm gonna take this off because I'm actually feeling quite warm. So as a bit of a topic, I thought we would talk a little bit about skincare. I'm gonna do my whole skincare um, regimen for you now because I've had a lot of questions recently about what I've been using and what I've been enjoying and I didn't feel like it warranted an entire video and I was gonna do something on Instagram about it but I thought it would probably be a good thing to start our chat with. So um, the cleanser that I've been using at the moment recently, hi Sandra, um, has been one from Primark. I'm not loving it, truth be told. For my skin, fine. Oh, does anybody else have this? I feel like I've actually cracked my nail doing this. So because I've got um, acrylic nails, when it grows out a little bit, they get kind of like hooks in the side and they hook onto my hair. It drives me insane. Hi, Sarah. Um, and I feel like I kind of sometimes make them a little bit weaker. Anyway, by the by. So I've been using this, it's called the Sleep Spa One Step Night Cleanse from Primark. I really like this, it's an oily cleanser and I'm using oily cleansers right now. I really like this to um, cleanse my skin. Also, I have a hard time with the opening part. Um, yes, you made it, you made it, we are live. I'm gonna leave this up, I think that's a thing. Again, it's been a while since I did this, but I am gonna leave this up. For those of you just joining us, we're doing skincare and this is an oil from Primark. Yeah, I'm gonna leave this up to be watched later on, so we'll see again how this works. Hi, Susan. So I've been using this for the past week or so, and I do like it, but it stings my eyes, and any kind of cleanser that stings my eyes, I'm just not into it. I need something that's gonna work. My, my eyes are not sensitive. I'm still gonna use it on my eyes, you know. Tough it out, um, but it drives me crazy because it works really well, but it's not comfortable at all for eye makeup removal. So I'm gonna hopefully not open my eyes so it doesn't hurt them too much. This is basically live skincare demo. So the reason that I felt like I wanted to mention skincare recently is because I've been breaking out a lot more than usual. I don't know, ordinarily I talk a lot, oh man, it really does. When it gets in my eyes, it really is uncomfortable. Um, ordinarily I'm looking for kind of brightening or um, something that's gonna make my skin feel super, super smooth. And that's not always for everyone, that's not always uh, something that is like, I don't know, I feel like everyone's got their own skincare stuff and their own skincare things that they're intro into. And um, that's just kind of what I look for from my skincare right now. Whereas when I was really, really interested in skincare videos and skincare recommendations, um, oh, it's one of my first lives too. So hello, welcome. Um, yeah, the, what I was usually looking for was because I was breaking out or because my skin was doing something that I couldn't control. So since my skin has been breaking out recently, I thought I would share what I've been using. Um, and usually my breakouts come from hair removal. I get a lot of breakouts around here because I get a lot of facial hair around here. And at some point I'm gonna do a video. The problem is I will get it to a stage where it would be worth talking about because there's like enough regrowth and I just can't stand it and I have to plug it all out. So I have to kind of toughen up and I just wait a few days um, for it to kind of be visible enough. I mean, it is visible, but I have to zoom you right in. Um, and I think you would be shocked, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sarah, you feel my pain. It is very frustrating because all I see on TV and uh, movies and things is people talk a lot about how you get to a certain age and, oh my God, suddenly I've found facial hair. Oh, there's this one, like people staring at their face 
in a magnifying mirror absolutely beside themselves because they found like the odd stray lung. I, it, there's so much, there's so much. I can't imagine in another 30 years what it's gonna be like. Um, what do I think of S. Lauder Advanced Night Repair? I really haven't tried it that much. I may, I may give it a go. Um, however, I, I do think that that kind of thing may work for my kind of breakouts because I um, tend to break out because of dehydration as well, but I haven't tried it yet. Uh, Tropic skincare, again, not really something I've tried. I think I just missed a comment. Can I go back? I can. Started using a microfiber cleansing cloths as the flannel ran out one day. Uh, you, da, 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 da. Right, the thing that bothers me about the microfiber cloths is they're basically the same cloths that you use to wash cars. Kind of bothers me slightly. Right, so I have been using the Glam Glow Super Mud Clearing Treatment. This is super expensive. I have been sent this before, but this is a pot that I purchased for myself. And because it's expensive, and because my skin is not super spot prone ordinarily, I can't really see what I'm doing in this viewfinder. I just paint it on the areas that need it instead of using it everywhere. But you know I, I need a mask. I've got something just kind of going away. I had matching spots last week, it was bizarre. And these are not areas like this, fine. This I'm used to, totally always got spots there. But I've been getting spots on my forehead, which is weird. And like down here is odd as well. Um, it's attractive, I know. I look like I'm going to be in the next Avengers or something. Um, but I pretty much, all the expensive masks that I've got that are specifically for something like, for example, the Gravity Mod, I tend to use that more on my eyes and my forehead. Um, the, well, this kind of thing, anything that's supposed to be clearing uh, or clarifying, I'll use on specific areas. Thinking of buying the Becca Hydra Mist Powder. Hydra Mist Powder? I have not heard of that. I was uh, watching something the other day, I think it was Makeup by Tiffany D, and I have to go back and find out what it was she was talking about because she was recommending a powder that was like hyaluronic powder that you uh, can use as skincare, which I wouldn't necessarily. Um, but she said that she uses it here because this is where she will get kind of like dehydration lines. It's not, it's not necessarily wrinkles or fine lines, but kind of right around this area is where she'll find that there are more lines because she's dehydrated. And a friend of mine who's got very dry skin always says the same thing. If she's dehydrated, she's not drinking off enough water, she can look 10 years older. Um, and that really interested me, the powder that she was, like how a powder can be, well, I say this, but for a, for a beat, I did work for Urban Decay way back when, and they brought out some products and one of them was a powder foundation and it had hyaluronic filling spheres. I remember that. Before hyaluronic acid was a thing, it was it was a thing that they had hyaluronic filling spheres. Mm. Yes, I wanna know about this powder. Uh, get laser before it goes gray. Okay, so the problem with the laser, uh, I, I haven't had actual laser laser, but the problem with the laser that I understand is that it does need to be a contrast and I have enough black hair for it to pick up. But I have tried my IPL, which I realise is not the same thing. And it doesn't seem to be the same. It doesn't seem to have the same effect. Like I've used my IPL, which is like a, a light pulse thing, an at home hair removal thing on my bikini line, which is a similar situation. And it is amazing. But for some reason it doesn't work as well on my face. At some point I might do IPL, but I have a feeling, not IPL, proper laser. Um, but I have a feeling I'm gonna go electrolysis at some point. It's not great. It's like a needle that goes in um, and then it like zaps the hair from the root and it can leave a lot of scarring and all this stuff. But I, I will definitely go down that route at some point because the hairs that I get around here, I get a lot of fine hair as well, a lot of light hair. Um, but the hairs that obviously are bothering me the most are the dark ones and they are black, full on stubble hairs. Drives me crazy. Yeah, see, that's the problem. That's the thing. The, the, the whole laser thing is you have to shave your face every day. You have to shave your face while using it. You can't pluck, you can't wax, you can't do anything else. And um, it doesn't always work. And that, that is something that kind of bothers me. I think the next thing that I have, if I have any kind of beauty treatment like that, um, away from hair removal, will be, I had that laser, you may remember. This was a big, dark, like a big freckle type thing. Um, I look like I've drawn a goatee, don't I? Um, yeah, it was a big kind of like patch of pigmentation there and it's not 100% gone away, but how quickly that was, the whole process, 
how quick it was to actually heal. Everything about it really sold me. So I've got little extra bits here and it's all sun damage, a little bit there. I think at some point I'm gonna get all of that lasered as well, because I think it's amazing. Um, Flawless Brows Hair Remover from Dunelm. Oh, hang on. So that's like, um, like the no-no. The no-no kind of like burns away the hairs on top, which to be quite honest, I've considered that as well. Oops, covered up the camera by accident. Obviously don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I have considered that because, but I hate the constant stubble. I don't care. There's no, there's no easy way. It's constant. Every single day I have to check. Drives me bananas. So right now, for those of you joining us, I am wearing the Glam Glow Super Mod Clearing Treatment on these areas of my face. And um, I'm just gonna wear it for a little bit and then I'm gonna do the rest of my skincare because we're talking about skin uh, today. And for the girl, lady, person, viewer, who just mentioned my uh, nails, I actually have them, they're acrylics. I have grown them easily to this length in the past, but the thing with acrylics is it's all permanent and I'm just completely sold on having my nails done all the time. So as someone said in a previous live, I was talking on Instagram yesterday and someone was talking about acrylics and she said that when everything else looks a mess, she knows that at least her nails are done. And that's totally true. Like, I know it's such a stupid thing, but I wanted to have painted nails. I always, I, I couldn't stand to have like painted, uh, chipped nails. I could go without them, but I had to like take the nail polish off and like file them down and make them look nice if I didn't have paint on them. So it would always be like another step that I had to um, do or had to complete before doing something. And no, it's just, I like to have them done all of the time. And it's been a nice alternative to my old hair appointments as well. Since I don't have my hair done anymore, um, it's a nice little treat to go and have my nails done. So she did like an ombre in acrylic. So like blue to green with this. And we ha I ha did it the same on both, ar both arms, on both hands. And then on this one, I was talking about the chrome powder for the next time. And she said, well, I can put the chrome powder over the top. And we were kind of running out of time. And I kind of liked the idea of the comparison. Um, I don't even know if it's going to show up all that well, to be honest, on this camera. But it's really cool. So they're basically exactly the same. But these have got a chrome powder over the top. Love it. Totally sold. I don't know what I'm going to do next time, though. Have a couple of weeks to think about it. But I do like the chrome powder. Uh, a good exfoliator, exfoliator for your face or an exfoliator for your body. Um, I am a big fan, I'm going to use this within this video, um, but I am a big fan of the Glow Tonic. This was gifted, this was sent to me, um, however I have purchased it myself. I used to buy it when it was in the um, labelless. Do you remember? There were little plastic bottles, I don't even think you could buy them online, you had to buy them from the Covent Garden store. Uh, and the first one I bought, I bought while I went down for IMATS one year, it was very exciting. Um, acne prone skin for face. Oh, so I would totally say glow tonic because anything where you've got um, acne, and you've, I've said this to Ella as well, my daughter, because she's a teenager and she's suffering with that right now. Anything, I'm at, is still a thing, Charlotte. Nobody goes, but well, no one from our community. I think it's just been reclaimed as a real makeup artist convention. It's not a YouTube thing anymore. Um, yeah, you don't want to aggravate the skin. You don't want to create more problems um and so kind of this kind of thing like acid toners are amazing if you've got breakouts uh if i've got a breakout the last thing i want to do is use like a manual exfoliator for me anyway maybe different for you but that's not what i like um although i do like i have some things that are kind of similar to this they've got like acids in them and they um are like masks kind of a microderm abrasion but like a liquid mask anything that promises to peel a layer of my skin away Absolutely sold on that. I, anything that gives me super smooth skin. Yes, lactic acid from The Ordinary, amazing. I've given that to Ella actually since because I think it's a really, really great product for um, a similar thing, but for acne. Uh, products that help with dark circles? No, honestly, I don't think that there really truly is anything. With this, I'm gonna show you in a minute, but I would put it on a cotton pad all over my face. I also use this all over my body. Um, when I'm, if I've been in the sun and I feel like I'm gonna peel, I'll get a really big cotton pad and put it all over my body everywhere. It's amazing. Um, what were we just saying? Let me just, wrong hand. What were we just talking about? Dark circles. I really don't think that there is. I think the majority of it does come down to genetics. 
And then of course there is the uh, whole, how much water do you drink thing. Um, but I really don't think that there is any product that helps dark circles. Did you change your skincare when pregnant? Well, your skin changes when you're pregnant. Um, yeah, any, any glycolic acid for body and, and face. I mean, I get that. Use the glycolic from the ordinary on your body because you don't want to use it all up, the expensive one, but um, I'm trying to get through these questions really quick. The Drunk Elephant brand, I have tried the baby facial. It's very, very nice, but it's not that, it's, it's not that great for how expensive it is for me. Um, there are other products that I like as much. In fact, a couple, we'll talk about, we'll have a video on this because I love the things that give you the, the peel. Um, and there are some things that I've really, really enjoyed that have been a fraction of the cost of that baby facial from Drunk Elephant. But touching back on the pregnancy thing, your skin will change. So it's not like, oh, well, when you're pregnant, this is the skincare that you need. All depends on your skin. Maybe you had oily skin and while you're pregnant, your skin is really, really dry. It, it goes bananas, like anything can happen. Same as it messes with you. Something changes like on a molecular level. It really is crazy um, to consider what can really change. Um, best skincare for oil control. Do you know, for the longest time, I went totally oil free because my skin was so oily. And then as I'm getting a little bit older and realizing that oily skin maybe was something that I was trying to avoid in my youth, but now it's what makes me look a little bit younger. If you go fully matte, then all of the extra little bits of dryness or any fine lines, it all just kind of like cakes in there and looks horrible and it definitely is aging. And so now I'm kind of embracing a more dewy finish for my foundation and kind of like oily skin in general. Um, and since I did that, I'm realizing, which we will talk about later on in the video, um, I'm realizing that oils are actually great for oily skin. And I remember reading something years ago. I'm not, you know, I'm no Caroline Hyrons. I'm not gonna be able to tell you anything um, life-changing here, but I can tell you kind of what I've learned over the years and what I've read about and stuff. And I remember reading something that said that um, oftentimes when you break out, not like, we're not talking about acne, but just like regular breakouts, um, it can be because you've stripped all of the oil from your skin and then your skin produces more oil to like overcompensate effectively and you end up breaking out because you've got too much oil. And so sometimes when you use things like Clearasil on those products that are supposed to be designed for oily or blemish prone skin, it actually does the opposite of what you want it to do. Um, and so now when I break out, I use more oils, which seems counterintuitive, but it works for me. It's not gonna work for everyone. But for me, I think that oil-free is not necessarily the way to go when you've got oily skin. Uh, let me just skim back and see what I've missed. Um, Superdrug Glycolic Toner is fab, agreed. Becca Hydra Mist, okay. I'm definitely gonna have a look at this. Uh, baby Facial is stupid expensive. The Ordinary is the same effect. We're talking about the red one from The Ordinary, right? The one that looks like a vampire facial. I loved that. Um, Kylie Jenner skincare brand, is it overrated? I haven't tried it, but I would probably say yes. Do I have a favorite sunscreen? Yes, I do. I don't use sunscreen every day. I definitely should, um, because I'm basically inside the house all of the time, I don't. But again, I, I get it. I understand I'm supposed to use it more often, especially because I'm prone to pig pigmentation and um, sun damage, I definitely should. But my favorite is from The Body Shop. There, is it called Skin Defense? I think it's called Skin Defense. Um, is there a nice one-step moisturizer, SPF tinted, reasonable price cream that you would recommend? Ah, that is difficult. Honestly, I don't think anything with this. I think if you're worried about SPF, it needs to be a separate product. Um, tint, oh, oh, okay. Because we're live, I'm not gonna go and get it right now. Cause obviously I can't cut that out. But the one and done from Urban Decay is my absolute favorite. I did. An IGTV this morning, I posted um, my everyday makeup and I showed applying it at the beginning of this video. I was wearing it and I've been at work all day. Um, but it's my favorite, favorite summertime foundation. It is basically a tinted moisturizer and it is called One and Done because it's supposed to have skincare benefits. I'm pretty sure it's got an SPF. That might be the product that you're looking for. Um, mm -mm -mm. What fake tan would you recommend for a pale fake tan version? I would recommend that you try a um, tinted, not tinted moisturizer. I'm already, I'm already back on the tinted moisturizer kick. Gradual tanner. So even like the Dove one, that's definitely where you should start. But 
apply it in uh, the same way that you would usually apply a regular tan. I have never applied, not since, not for years and years anyway, um, I, I would never have applied a fake tan. Uh, I would never. Okay. We're going to start again. I would never apply a tinted moisturiser with my hands because I have had orange hands enough times to realise that it's basically the same product, it's just watered down. So even if you wash your hands, it won't necessarily come off. You may still end up with orange hands. So yes, I would say um, gradual tan is the way to go. However, definitely apply it in the same way that you would anyway. Um, will you do more fake tan videos? Yes, I definitely will do more fake tan videos. I actually just picked up, um, I'm just gonna remove this now. I Honestly, I don't know. I think it's one of the Essex people, but I've never watched that show, unfortunately. So I don't know which one it is. Um, but lots of people asked me to try the gradual tan, so I picked it up and I will give it a go for you soon. Um, probably my favorite tan that I've tried so far. Oh, I got a low power sign on my phone. Um, the best tan that I've tried so far, I think, is the Vita Liberata. I did a review on it last year, the three-week tan. It's expensive, um, but if you are someone who really can't be bothered, which is me, someone that wants something easier, I would probably apply, I'm going to put on the Pixie glow tonic now, I would probably recommend that because you have to do it less often, um, and it was a little more foolproof. I preferred the colour and everything. That being said, I'm possibly looking at it through rose tinted glasses now because it's been a while since I tried it. So take that with a pinch of salt, maybe go back and watch that video and see how it's gonk come off my face when I use this. Um, oh, who and what kind of YouTube videos do I watch? That's a great question. So I don't watch a tremendous amount of YouTube now. I, I watch, watch, I almost exclusively watch people talking, people sitting like this, get in the bath, sit and watch people talk about products. Um, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be products that I'm particularly interested in, but that's the kind of video that I'm interested in watching. Um, hello, hello. Um, for those of you just joining us, this hopefully will be available for you to watch like from the very beginning after we finished, but this is a bit of a trial run. I may do this more often. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I prefer people kind of just sitting and chatting. Um, as a mum, do you think ooh, social media is linked to anxiety and depression? Well, yes and no. Because I mean, I think if you're talking from a mum's perspective, then we've always had people to compare ourselves to. And now we've just got more people to compare ourselves to. And it just depends on how susceptible you are as a person. So although social media can feel lonely because you're not really interacting with people, you're also kind of connected with people in a way that, especially when you're a new mom, you may not have had access to the same community. I know for me, I wasn't, I, I went back to work and all that stuff. And so I didn't really make mom friends. And I think that, especially when I had Ella when I was 18, or no, sorry, 19, um, I, oh, sorry, is there a lot of buffering? Is the internet not so great now? Apologies. Um, yeah, I think that I would have really benefited from social media then. Um, if we're talking about for children, then I just, I have to be. Are we back? No, uh, it was going to be just a chatty video. Um, but Milo's not been very well, so I ended up coming home from work a little bit earlier. And previously, hopefully, hopefully, we're back online now. Now growing up with social media, so they've got a different mentality towards it. They weren't without it, and so things are a little bit different. I don't know. I think that's just me hoping for the best. Um, but also, we need to kind of be a little bit more on top of it as well. There's an advert at the moment that talks about bullying and how bullying is not how you imagine bullying to be. Like. A, an older generation might imagine that it's all physical violence. And I, I already feel like my parents should have been aware that it wasn't all physical, bullying is not all physical, but it's crazy to me that only now is there an advert on TV that's talking specifically about how bullying has changed. Um, 
because that's like my generation. <laughs> it's crazy, but hey, I suppose there's still people uh, are like, <laughs> maybe because I was a young mom, so I'm looking at like my teenager, like I was going through that, let alone my teenager, I'm aware. But, um, but like I say, I, I hope I hope for the best social media wise, but also I lost a load of you when, uh, when we were buffering. Uh, did I find a product that helped my hair grow? No, I'm afraid not. Um, the only thing that I did that really did help my hair is leave it alone. And I know people don't want to hear that, but it's true. Um, so we are going to just talk lastly about the last couple of products that I really like. <coughs> my throat just got suddenly really dry. It's like somewhere between those little mixer cans and a regular size can. I don't, but I like it. Um, this has been pixie heavy and it's about to get even heavier, but the oil of choice right now is this rose blend. Is it called rose oil blend? Um, and like I said earlier on, when I am breaking out, for some reason, oil is the thing. Um, it is the aim of the game. I don't know why it just works so well to help with breakouts. I can feel as well, I'm getting something here. What is so much change recently? Right, is it cold? Is it warm? What is going on? Well, I can feel a, a bunch of different bumpy things going on underneath the surface of my skin. But I had quite a few breakouts around here last week and all of them have diminished by using, I'm really enjoying, is, and I tend to put this on my cuticles, especially with having acrylic nails, I'm very aware that I need to kind of keep them moisturised and keep my cuticles as oiled up as possible in the evenings. So the other one that I really like is the Declior, is it called Aromessence? Neroli Amara. Hydrating acid, and you only need a very, very small amount of this. Um, but I also really, really like that for, okay, the two oils, Katie, that I was using, the Pixie and the Declior, um, both really, really nice for, okay, so, I did want to mention just quickly before we hop off because this is going to be around a half an hour then um because of the products that i've used uh it came up in conversation the other day i can't remember if it was on a live or what it was on um maybe it was in my disappointing products i forget anyway um it came up in conversation and it was kind of making me think about the way things are now and the way that pr and sponsorships and stuff have changed youtube and this may be a whole separate video um, let me know if you'd be interested in hearing kind of like more about this. But I think it's worth noting that even when something has been, because I can say the fact that I've been sent a product ha has no bearing on my opinion of that product whatsoever. And that is true. However, I have to acknowledge that if one brand sends me product after product after product after product, I have more access to those products. And so... For example, these are the two oils that I have in my collection right now. I haven't had to go out and buy another oil because I have these two. And so I'm not going out and buying one from L'Oreal to try. I'm not going out and buying one from Estee Lauder to try. That's the reason I haven't tried the Advanced Night Repair. Perhaps I would have. If I use these up, then I'll end up buying something else to test. But it does put the products in my hands. And so you have to acknowledge that even if you're not being paid off by a company. You're not allowing the fact that the product was free um, to influence how you feel about the product. You have to acknowledge that you have the products that you perhaps wouldn't have had. And the products that you are using and are ending up in your favorites videos are ending up there because you have that product that's been sent to you. Do you know? So that's kind of something that I'm struggling with right now because I've always tried to be as honest as possible. And I do, do pride myself on not being able to be um, kind of bought off. And I, I have always said like, it doesn't affect me, you know, the fact that they're sending me these products, I'll get like a really cool PR thing and the whole thing looks really cool and wow, this is amazing, but it's not affecting the way I feel about the brand. Um, and maybe that's true. Maybe I can make myself uh, immune to that, which I don't think I can. I think that you have to, you know, that I am probably even inadvertently being brainwashed by these brands. 
Um, but even if I can, I have to acknowledge that I wouldn't have those products in my collection. I wouldn't be using those products. They wouldn't end up in my favorites had they not been sent to me in the first place. A lot of these products I would never have purchased. Um, and even if I say to you that this, I, I bought this, but originally it was sent to me and I possibly would not have spent the 40 pounds that this is had it not been sent to me in the first place. And even though I can say to you, this is really expensive. And actually I've tried this other product that is equally as good. Even if the fact that I've tried this to influence that the brand had on me. I don't know, that's kind of an interesting thing that's, that's been kind of mulling in my mind recently because, um, because of all the, all the recent discussion about kind of PR and sponsorship and gifted stuff and whatever. So I think maybe we'll do a whole chat about that. Um, but yeah, okay, last thing, last thing. Again, it is a pixie product. And yes, they have indoctrinated me, I've been brainwashed. Um, this I wanted to show you because it's super cool. So this is, a, it's called On The Glow Multi-Use Moisture Stick. I think it has, um, a, well it says, it is recommended that prior to exposure to the sun, users cover the areas that AHA, uh, where AHAs have been applied with sunscreen. So, um, there is an exposure is all, you know, let's strip a layer of skin back and see it glow. Um, and so although it's a moisturizer, it still has something. Your choices have got less budget and more mid-range. Do you know what? No, because my, my choices, my personal choices when shopping are still budget. And yet the products that I show you, I am sent more mid-range products. And so I try more mid-range products um, just by design. Less budget products contact me, budget brands contact me an entire, like I get to receive an entire range of Bobbi Brown lipsticks which I will, rec like, I will recommend. I will review, I'll swatch and whatever for my blog, and I may end up mentioning them here on Instagram or whatever else. Um, but then I might reach out to a particular brand. Um, there was one particular brand that I reached out to not that long ago, very, very affordable, and I thought, I really wanna try more products from this brand. Um, if they'll send me some stuff, then I could do like a whole testing video, that would be interesting. They had no interest in working with me. It's just kind of, it is what it is. And I don't make a tremendous amount of money from YouTube, and it has to kind of at least pay for itself. So I, I kind of talk about the products that shop with me. That video is coming up this week and I'm going to do a haul for you soon. So I'll have some new stuff to try. But yeah, that's kind of the way of things. So this is a moisturizing stick. But like I said, the, um, the, the whole range is glow. So I believe it's got something in it that's also an exfoliator. And you swipe it onto your skin. It's just me. I love it so much. I don't know what it is about this. But I don't know if it's just the gimmick of it. It's like a solid moisturizer. And I will put this oil on now, um, relatively early in the day. And then I will go downstairs, do whatever I'm gonna do. Just before bed, I'll then swipe this on my face, moisturize it everywhere, rub it in everywhere. And it just feels heavy and I love it. And I wanted to mention it because it is super cool for travel. Um, very, very, it's like multi-use whatever, whatever. But I would love to see a, a product like this from a budget brand. I also would love to hear your recommendations for, um, a for because that's something that I get asked all the time and I'd like to try a bunch of them, but if you guys have tried some and know that some of them work, let me know. Um, so that's gonna be it for today's live. I wanna know what you think of these and whether or not you think this is something you would like to see um, regularly. Do you wanna see it weekly? Do you wanna see it monthly? Um, I do do, like I said at the beginning, I do do a weekly, just like a casual chat with Emma about all kinds of things that have happened that week. Um, we talked a lot about James Charles and Tarty, let me tell you, and uh, Birmingham Primark, we went there. Uh, but we had some like topics and questions and stuff, it's been really interesting. And I'd like to bring that format here, solo, just you and I, and maybe we'll do um, like some Q&A stuff, or maybe we'll have a topic like this one. Uh, I, I'm gonna just see how many people kind of interact with this and engage and we'll see whether or not this is something you guys would be interested in because it's really fun. I like to do a live. Um, and really because of the way that I film videos, it, I don't really edit very much anyway. So I may as well just film it and it goes straight out there. It's as easy for me as anything. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, feel free to weigh in on anything that I've said. 